Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 6 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called Passing the Word, and is about communication between architects and builders. This builds on the previous chapters which talked about the necessity of architects to maintain conceptual integrity in their products. The first part of this communication is a manual. This is the external specification of the product detail. It talks about what the end user sees and what he or she is able to interact with. It is important to note, however, that the manual is not meant to describe what the user does not see. This is not prescriptive of whatever it is that goes on under the hood of the software it pertains to. Details that granular are the purview of the implementers. There is also something to be said in the manual for what is not in the product. These are things that are out of scope, which implementers might be tempted to add to the product while they are working on the project as a whole, but which would likely be a distraction from the main mandate of the software. In the context of this manual, architects must be very explicit in their language. English, and really most languages, are more poetic than precise, in the sense that words can have multiple meanings, and the opportunities for being clever or eloquent abound. This is not the time or the place for such a thing, and this gives rise to the concept of a formal definition, which uses a specified process to document the specs, guide development, and verify completeness when finished for software. Formal definitions tend to add a lot of overhead to the schedule for a project, and as a result, levels of robustness are tuned appropriately to the severity of repercussions in the case of failure on the part of the software. Mr. Brooks offers the following opinion on meetings to coordinate decisions across the teams uh, are most effective at two levels. The first is a weekly half-day meeting of the architects, project managers, and representatives of the implementers where sundry details can be ironed out. The second is an annual or semi-annual meeting of that same group, but for a much more extended period. Two weeks, he suggests, to clear any backlog of implementation questions that hasn't been handled sufficiently up to this point. The former type of meeting is fruitful because it allows major stakeholders to be aware of what's going on throughout the team and give input on items that are applicable to their domain. The latter type is useful because it allows any backlog of issues to be resolved in an extended session. Implementing a software multiple times simultaneously is an expensive but effective way to ensure that the product being built will be according to the spec. If only one implementation is being done, it might start to diverge and the spec is more likely to be updated than the software changed to suit the spec. On the other hand, if two or more implementations are being made at the same time, they will naturally check each other as they have to compete to be the one selected for use upon completion. The final section in our chapter, called Passing the Word, is about testers. They're the ones who verify on a continual basis that the product is progressing as planned, that the features work as expected, and hopefully minimizing bugs along the way. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful and thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.